all and welcome to episode of Enterprise Tech India Unplugged. I know we've been slow in our uh, output for this content, but uh, we've been uh, doing all kinds of lazy business to uh, <laughs> to, to pr- produce this content. And uh, I'm sure if, if you are interested, you are back here and you want to listen to this content. As usual, you can subscribe to this content on YouTube or the best way to do enjoy this content is by listening to it. And you can easily get this podcast on uh, Podomatic and uh, Apple Podcast. The RSS feed is there on uh, etiunplugged.in if you want to join. We have as our guest Kumaran, who is the CTO and, uh, and chief mentor at Tiny Magic. And he has an excellent podcast, yeah. Saturday Architecture, which I participate in. I encourage you to listen to that. We're available on uh, YouTube as well as uh, on the Tiny Magic uh, LinkedIn page. Today, the topic which we have is uh, to discuss something which is coming out from this book called uh, Team Topologies. And this is this is a book written by uh, Matthew Skelton and uh, Manuel Pais. This is an excellent book which discusses how the structure of the team impacts the architecture which which the, the team actually delivers. And it, it talks about how the communication between teams impacts the quality of the software output uh, and the flow. Right? This is that is a theme and it's it is based on uh, Conway's law. Conway's was proposed in a paper by Conway in, in 1968 uh, on, uh, on how the, the communication structures of an organization reflect in the, in the software architecture. There, One interesting point which, which we, I want to uh, bring it up to you, Kumaran, is it says not everybody needs to communicate, which is a sort of a, a counter-intuitive uh, thing to say uh, when we are when we are all about collaboration, everybody should collaborate. What this book actually says is, not everybody needs to know everything, right? You need to optimize what needs to stay inside the team, and what needs to be uh, communicated with other teams and the stakeholders. Not everybody needs to co- collaborate all the time, right? So that's a important uh, information which which sort of struck me that. This is this is counterintuitive. Otherwise, all we are promoting is everybody should collaborate. But seriously, not everybody needs to know everything about everything. What is your view on the structure of teams? How it affects uh, uh, your organization? It's interesting, right? The team structure itself, right? And and that point that you made about not everybody needs to communicate about everything. I think that's very true. And now that you Start it. I think there's some things which we do intuitively and a lot of things we don't do it intuitively. So there is a repository where new ideas are shared. Mm-hmm. Now these, when I say idea, it is very nascent. It mm-hmm. is not even a requirement. It is not even, so let's put it this way. There is a thought which is inside the mind. Mm-hmm. If it is something which others can see it, then it's an idea. Mm-hmm. Okay, then the idea becomes a uh, possibility. Mm-hmm. Possibility becomes a requirement. Mm-hmm. Then it actually becomes a user story or a use case which needs to be implemented. Then it actually gets implemented. I mean, like it is a very low possibility and you let it go or it got killed there. So, Now, with respect to anything that we do in tech, whether it is a process change or whether it's a technology change or it's a specific use case thing, okay, so that's one thing. I mean, why should you restrict it to somebody? For example, uh, there have been enough cases to say that, let's say somebody from an admin department can Mm -hmm. actually solve a security problem. Mm -hmm. It is about inclusivity and multiple Mm -hmm. views to it. Otherwise, 
the finance team is restricted with only a finance view of things. Mm -hmm. Probably somebody who is in uh, sales can actually give a better solution to a finance problem. Mm -hmm. No, everybody should be given that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, the challenge which I have seen with that, going back to our ideas, thoughts, what mm -hmm. we want to do, and as the complexity of the system that you're dealing with, whether it's a software or a team or a process, the number of ideas that which gets generated becomes so much that nobody looks at it. <laughs> yes. It's just become too overwhelming. Like uh, every day some two ideas is being generated by somebody. Okay. So it is like uh, receiving 50 notifications. So what we call as open knowledge sharing and culture mm -hmm. has become spam. Mm. Okay. So now the challenge with that is the baby gets thrown out with the bath water. Bath water. <laughs> yes. right? Now, if I swing to the other thing, the ideas for this is going to go only here, then I lose multiple perspective and multiple challenges. So let so, me let me give a little more context to this uh, communication uh, pattern which we spoke about. So the the communication pattern what he's talking about, uh, what they're talking about in his book is says within the team, right? The team which is a unit, which mm -hmm. is let's say a software team, there should be high bandwidth communication. And if there are multiple, so this, this sort of applies in a large organization, which are working together to build a multi uh, sort of a multiple microservices. And uh, if you go by the original thought behind microservices, like one team should be doing one microservice kind of a uh, uh, approach. So, so in that situation saying, where within the team you have high bandwidth communication, where you share ideas, where you develop ideas and for that microservice, you do whatever it takes to deliver that. But across teams, you function exactly like a microservice world. You function through an API. Uh, that this That is a low bandwidth communication where yeah. there's a protocol. You don't know what is happening inside that black box, but when I need to get something in and out of the black box, I use that API. And that is classifying as a low bandwidth communication where you interface with other team on specific areas where you need to collaborate. And they don't need to see all your ideas. They don't need to see all, all your, uh, what you have churn you have gone through to arrive at what that API does. And they are just consuming it. And there could be some teams where you need to do a more closer collaboration where you do need to understand their API inside and sort of, let's say you share certain characteristics of, of the databases, which you are using, where you want to collaborate more. There is a, what they call as a medium bandwidth communication. So that is the kind of structure they are suggesting, which, uh, uh, which is more in line with what the software actually the architecture might do. If you're looking at a microservices architecture, this this kind of team structure will help you function better to improve the flow instead of all three let's say there are three microservices which are being used in the whole applications and 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 there are three different teams instead of all these three teams sharing one communication with everything that this is what we are doing this is what we are doing and everybody is like going into the same spam mode that doesn't really help anybody correct yeah right. so that's the context what do you think there I think that that makes sense. And probably I think it is, uh, we have to evolve what kind of things is medium, what is low and mm -hmm. what is high bandwidth. And uh, I, I, I think it's only with experiment and for each team, you can figure out the proportion. Because today, if you look at it, the structure of teams itself, there is the squad or the pod model where... Mm -hmm. Everybody inside that team does everything. Yeah. So then when you sp split it across capabilities mm -hmm. or multiple functionalities as different parts, take it over. So then it is something like everybody again needs to know about everything within that. Mm -hmm. So practically a microservice is actually a microservice. Like let's say if, if you just take a uh, startup and they say 
customer management is going to be one part. Actually, I haven't seen that in startups. Mm-hmm. It's all still feature only. But yeah. even if you kind of tag it as uh, customer management and finance management is another thing and uh, inventory management is a kind of thing. I think within that also probably the same pattern needs to apply. What will be high, what will be medium and what will be low. So I think, yes, it makes sense. And probably I think we need to take a conscious call of, hey, this information will be high. Mm -hmm. This will be put into the low channel. And probably I think some, my one idea that strikes me now is probably something like, if if I get a particular idea, in the low communication channel, maybe I'll just send one line. It's mm-hmm. like that app, which is in shots, no, that kind mm-hmm, of a thing. Mm-hmm. So probably we need to evolve something such that I give an idea for all the people who have subscribed to that set of information as low, only what the headline will come. Or maybe you can send it as a digest for an entire week where only the titles will come. So you look at the titles and then decide whether you want to click and go inside or leave it. Probably. I, I think each team has to evolve at what level they want to communicate and how much. But I think it's a good point to kind of say, let's not go blindly telling, let everybody know everything. I mean, we have this thing, no? There's nothing like under communication, over communication is good. And I don't think that's completely valid. Yeah, I I think that, that thing, I think over communication in the kind of kills communication also, right? Or tension. I I think it's a context. I think the over communication part more applies to change management. It's more like when you're trying to change something or trying to uh, bring in some sort of a culture change, then over communication helps. Mm. Uh, But in a, in a normal operation scenario, where you are making, trying to get the work done. In that scenario, over communication definitely does not help. And uh, especially for uh, creating a spam, all of us in our organization ignore certain emails, no, no matter where they come from. <laughs> Every day, there'll be a whole bunch of emails coming from a lot of people. Some emails you will never read. You know that. And that is just an information overload. And people develop these, uh, these inherent uh, ways of understanding what is relevant to them, what is not relevant to them. And they will just ignore it. And I've seen it. You see, I have the way I have organized my mailbox. I usually don't read anything which is sent to or CC to me. And I I will not spend too much time reading anything besides that. Now, you may say this may restrict my uh, understanding of what is happening around me, which is true. But that is that is also my way of keeping the irrelevant stuff for me outside my what this is also book talks about the cognitive load there's a something which which they have actually extensively talked about in the book is the cognitive load this this extra information is increasing the cognitive load on the team so to manage the cognitive load you have to keep that communication to that level which the team can actually consume and actually create output out of so that the actually the 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 reason behind i think uh, which they are suggesting in the book to uh, restrict the communication to that high bandwidth low and medial medium bandwidth is to manage that co- cognitive load for example as a maybe if i'm Im- implementing some part of the microservice i don't really need to know all the other 10 microservices which are there in the system because that will increase my cognitive load to understand what those microservices are doing and, and then sort of also do my work. So that's that's the approach. I, I think uh, any, any comments before we close this I discussion? Think, yeah, and I think that kind of leads to probably we need to have a culture of let me ask mm-hmm. instead of I doing it. And I think that's a balance again. I won't run to something for everybody. Yeah, it... And or the other thing, like, uh, I will read everything up by myself. So mm-hmm. I, I would be better off, like, I ask you, hey, can you give me a TLDR version mm-hmm. of that? <laughs> yes. Right? I, I think we need to encourage both. Mm-hmm. Give me details mm-hmm. in a conversation. 
Mm-hmm. We should also encourage, no, 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 don't waste my time. Just give me TLDR. Mm-hmm. We kind of tend to say, let people talk. Mm-hmm. It is stop. It's bad to interrupt them. Mm-hmm. Okay, let people, I mean, let's, I think what I kind of take is, again, I said an email, one kind of a thing. So let's say we are having a team meeting. Mm-hmm. Somebody should be given the liberty to say, Gus, I'm getting bored with this conversation. Okay. Can we cut it short? Okay. Or give a TLDR. If you want more details, please have a separate conference around that. I think that is something we should need to develop into the culture so people's interest are maintained. Or it will say, look, I'm losing interest in this. Okay. Right. You're going to delve deeper. Let me drop out. You guys continue. I don't have any problem. Okay. I don't see a relevance of me sitting to another 15, 20 minutes or half an hour listening to the details of this. Or you explain to me why I should listen. Then I will listen. Yeah, I think, yeah, this this, this also people sort of give you subtle signals when they are not paying attention. So, so it's it's also, and, and, and this is also important for the conveyors of those ideas to understand when people are not interested. I, in I get it, but see, I don't want to take a passive approach to things the, mm-hmm. generally. My approach yeah. is I don't want to take a passive approach. So instead of uh, I trying to figure out your face and trying to do a Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Now that's very hard. Yes. Right. It's like, should I be talking or should I look at your body language? And that too, when you're working remote, your video will be off or correct, it will correct. freeze. Okay, or your camera, like for example, I, I've seen people where they have extension monitor. And right. I'm looking at my extended monitor. I'm intensely listening to what you are. Yes. But if you look at my face, it looks to us I'm, I'm not paying interest. attention. Right? Or I like looking at your face, but I want to look at the content. So I'm looking at the content. I read mm-hmm. the two words in it and I got lost. Doesn't mean I've lost interest in listening to you. Yes. Yes. In fact, I've got more interested. Right. But if you implicitly pick a signal like that, right? Yeah. Let that implicit induction not be the primary mm-hmm. decision making tool. Correct. Correct. You can actually make it simple or take a conscious effort to. We talk about trust mm-hmm. and openness, and let's get it down to some very basic things. Hey, I'm getting bored. Mm-hmm. Tell it. Okay. I don't see the relevance of me spending another 15 minutes here. Now, that has a cascading effect in team structure and collaboration. Now, kind of goes back to the Conway structure. Mm-hmm. If there is hierarchy, I mm-hmm. won't say I'm getting bored. Okay. If I'm not going to say I'm getting bored, I will come to the meeting, but I won't listen. You might take with all details, you will take all the effort and experience. Now, Mm -hmm. two, three meetings it has happened. Fourth meeting, you tell something relevant to me. I won't listen to it because I've trained myself to shut. Oh, this Deepak guy, (laughs) he'll just go. (laughs) So in the fourth meeting, you told something which is relevant to me. But I didn't pick it up. And three meetings later, you asked me, Kumar, I hope you're taking care of that. He says, what? Taking care of what? (laughs) Yes. No, in the sixth meeting, I told no. Mm -hmm. Those three points for you. Mm-hmm. I gave it so much detail. Boss, that is the problem. You gave too much detail. <laughs> that is why I didn't listen. The yeah. first four meetings, you gave too much detail that I switched off. In the fifth meeting, you gave so much detail about me, but I was still switched off. Right. I, I think uh, I think what you mentioned is, is very important to set that balance. How to communicate and, uh, and especially in the remote world when you cannot pick up subtle signals, uh, it is important to voice out uh, your interest levels and uh, it is and for the people presenting those ideas also it is important to seek that feedback right uh. it's important it's, it's they should not wait for somebody to interrupt and tell them this is, i'm getting bored this is they should the the presenter should actually check the status of the audience whether they are still interested in i would part- encourage that to ask an explicit question guys yes. are you with me so far shall yes. i continue with more details do you understand why you are listening to this in some way asking an explicit question so in fact in fact uh, this reminds me of uh, of what we when we when we do this teaching class and especially these remote classes this important dipstick check 
where you need to keep on uh, getting this uh, uh, active feedback from from your participants is important to maintain the level of flow which you need to do and especially if you're trying to teach something uh, a new concept or something like that it becomes even more important and and by the way school teachers have learned this thing in the last two years very well <laughs> right? and there are funny videos about it my wife is a school teacher she knows about it so so that that's those are the things which is there so so thank you kumaran for this this enlightening discussion and i and think i think we'll come back to some of these team topologies discussions as we as i progress through this book because this is one idea regarding communication which struck me and i hope all of you also get some uh, sense of how the communication uh, within a team impacts and how the collaboration actually impacts so keep coming back we intend to keep on producing this content uh, for you if you enjoy it please share it with other people uh, mark like on it give five star rating whatever you need to do to help us understand that you like this content thank you and see you next time